and then everybody will have a less of a headache. Um, but until then, you keep telling me what to do, and you will not post in this chat very often, if ever. You can go sit in YouTube, and I'll ignore you. Otherwise, you know, act like an adult, please. Ant-Man? <laughs> Only if I can have a wasp. All right, so we're going to continue playing our adventure. Uh, we are playing Sokzul in the year 250. Let's see if it loads or if I didn't install the tile set correctly. It loaded! Yay! All right, so our adventure is Sokzul. Soxel is a dwarf. Uh, his, her nose bridge is incredibly concave. Her curly hair is crinkly. Her medium length hair is tied in a ponytail and her eyebrows are high. Her eyelashes are short and her ears have small lobes. Her hair is chestnut and her skin is sepia. And her left lower leg bears a straight scar. Her eyes are cobalt and she is absolutely inexhaustible, tough and strong. Dreams of crafting a masterwork someday and the text is a little fucky. So let me just zoom out ever so slightly. Need to get it to the right spot where there it is. Uh, she dreams of crafting masterwork someday and is very comfortable around others that have a diff that are different from herself. She accepts favors without developing a sense of obligation, preferring to act as the current situation demands. She can handle stress and she has a tendency to go it alone without considering the advice of others. She is brave in the face of imminent, imminent danger and she generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. She's really happy or enthusiastic and is pleased by her own appearance and talents and she is not particularly interested in what others think of her. When she's thinking hard, she has a habit of licking her lips. And she needs alcohol to get through the working day and is getting used to tragedy. As far as kills, uh, we've killed a grizzly bear and a cougar. Um, I'm currently drowsy and I have slight sensory nerve damage because uh, I got a nerve severed in my leg. So my left leg is a little bad, but could be worse. Over here, um, we have Tiny. Tiny is our pet bear who belongs to Cyril, who is our other adventurer, who is a person with the head of a flying squirrel. Chat named him. Um, the translation of the last name of that character is something. Um, so currently, I'm drowsy and focused. What do I have in my inventory? It's been a couple days. Uh, I have tr a piece of char- Right, yeah, I brought a piece of charcoal, didn't I? Uh, cockatiel liver, li liver. Bunch of random coins. Grizzly bear meat. And am I out of water? I think I am. I do have some plump helmets, though. Yeah, I need uh, I need water. Or I have, rather, sorry. I do have two water. I couldn't see that. But I'm out of alcohol. Um, this is the Vettelinger tile set, and I need to zoom out a bit. Because this is way too big. Here, it's a bit better. So we... Are we on a quest? I can't remember. Well, apparently it's party time, so there's only one logical thing to do at this exact moment, which is see if I can find an entertainment mound in this helix that we are in. Nope, not that. Let's go up to this one. Drop down. And see if I can find that mound. I think it's over here. Nope, not that one. So this one down here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. I go down to here, and I'm going to do the only logical thing that someone would do in a situation like this. I could pet my pet bear. I'm going to uh, end this conversation and begin a performance. I'm going to per perform music. I'm going to s sing uh, Baths Obscene, which is an example of the rhyme of songs where the work has no particular subject and the composition is not awful, but not very good either. Uh, and I'm mimicking an instrument, I think. You begin the musical composition, Baths Obscene, and uh, the high highbrow, uh, eyebrows woodcutter uh, sounds vaguely like the intended Uthing. 
It sounds vaguely like it's intended to sound. And uh, we conclude our performance. And uh, I'm assuming they hated it. Feel enjoyment while performing. At least I enjoyed that. All right, let's go talk to somebody and see if I can stay for the night. Boy, you person, highbrow woodcrafter. Uh, great listener. Uh, good morning or good good evening. Uh, the serv this servant of fire greets you. I say, and uh, they respond with, "I'm Thycut. Prophet room. Is it time to make music?" And uh, I'm going to ask for permission to stay for a day. And they said, certainly. It would be terrible to leave someone to fend for themselves after sunset. And I'm drowsy. I'm going to take a nap. Cannot see dawn. Well, I'm just going to sleep for eight hours. No. Cobbler's mad. Also, why is Cobbler mad? Various display cases with nothing in them. Okay, so I need to find me some alcohol. I'm also going to stand up. My bear is down in here, so I'm actually just going to lead Tiny, the grizzly bear. I mean, I, I could ride Tiny, actually. Let's ride Tiny. That's easier. Uh, we're going to ride up. Wait, what? Can Tiny not ride up here? Okay, well. Fine, then. Uh, dismount. I will lead Tiny instead, then. There we go. And we... Let's see if I can find some alcohol. There we go. This seems like a good place to start. But uh, I don't expect them to... I mean, I, I could always be wrong, right? But I, I don't expect them to turn the economy back on. <laughs> like, based on the way Tarn has talked about it, yeah, I, I don't expect them to ever turn it back on. Some low boots. High boots. Bags, plump helmets. Don't really need food. Food ain't the issue here. Well, let's let's eat some grizzly bear meat and uh, drink some water, and I'll just look for alcohol. Let's lead Tiny out. So Tiny got separated from us earlier, and. Uh, Tiny got separated from us earlier, and the kind of hysterical thing is that it took us a kind of... Well, we just kind of accepted that Tiny was gone, and uh, after giving up finding him, he just kind of showed up again, which is kind of funny as hell. <laughs> There's so many people talking. Everybody's petting Tiny. Well, at least Tiny's getting his pets. I'm sure Tiny needs it. So many plump helmets. Um, get splatted? Nope, the, the squirrel's still following, following me. And, uh, I don't know about the... I'll be honest with you, I never was able to actually find the, uh, like, squirrel squirrel. I mean, the, the flying squirrel, Cyril, is still here, but as far as the, like, vermin squirrel, I don't know. <laughs> I never even found it in the first place, so... Maybe Cyril has it, maybe not, I, I don't actually know. That's not what I wanted. I wanted the look key. I'm looking for barrels. Yeah, I don't understand how these spaces, like, people don't just go insane in them. And also, feel free to ask questions about Adventure Mode, and I'll do my damnedest to answer them. Although, 
Within reason, I ain't no expert. Well, let's just go down to here and we'll just go sleep. Yeah, I'm weirded out by the Gorlack leather, but not much you can really do, right? Oh, that's really far down. I was thinking, okay, there'll be some water here. I can go just refill, but nope, it's too, far too sleep. It's far too steep, rather. No, oh, let's sleep till dawn. Oh, I'm sure there will, I know there, there will absolutely be surprises. What's this? There will absolutely be surprises. That's a given. I don't think they're going to turn the economy back on. The nickel statue is F1. The new beginning of bearing. The item, uh, on the item is an image of Zephon Clean Yearlings, the new bearing, the deity of fertility. It was depicted by a male dwarf in nickel. Can you forge your own gear and distill booze yourself? No. Um, so it's a very limited ver number of mechanics from fortress mode, basically. Um, there is like virtually no crafting for one thing. Um, okay, and, and my water is frozen. Great. There's, like, virtually no crafting. You can sort of build, build cabins. You can go on quests, and you can sandbox your way around the world. But all of the crafting side of adventure mode is done in fortress mode, essentially. So if you want to craft your own gear for adventure mode, you can do that. But the way that you're kind of intended to do that is to spend some time in a fortress build a cool-ass fortress, and then later swap from fortress mode to adventure mode, and there's all of your gear. Hmm. Everything's frozen. I mean, I guess I could just make a campfire. Uh, interact. Heat, yeah, layak, leather, water, skin, near campfire. Bet. I drink the water. So, June? You know, I'll just echo the thing that they said to me, which is, if they weren't confident they could get it within that window, they wouldn't have announced it. And you got to remember, the last time we had a release date for Dwarf Fortress thing was the premium release date itself. And they made it. They gave us a release window, and they hit it. So I'm pretty confident it'll be out in April. Let's drop into this fortress, although I may end up on top of it. Yay! Yay! Kind of hungry, but it's okay. There will be booze in here. I mean, that's fine. Camp building is a very minor part of adventure mode. Yeah, that's like the only caveat, really. Although Tarn also said in the last Future of the Fortress, which was, you know, very recently, that it is likely... Um... This is full of ginkgo wood. It is very likely just looking for booze. So much stuff. Anyway, he said that it... Troll tripe? Excuse me? What kind of dwarven fortress is this? Troll brain? Bunch of goblins. Actually, this might be. these might be goblins. I don't know. Glazer Dwarves. Can you climb in Adventure Mode? Uh, without falling? Hopefully. Basically, like, the short list of what you can... Like, your... The actual... I, what's the term that I'm looking for here? 
the actual verbs that you have in adventure mode are kind of limited, right? So it's one of those... You can, in theory, do a lot of things. But the number of tools you have to interact with the world are pretty limited. Um, but the reason adventure mode is interesting isn't because there are things you can do that are from fortress mode. Like, you can, you can fight stuff. You can uh, start wars. You can overthrow governments, sort of. Um, you can go around and explore your old forts. Uh, you can explore uh, the procedurally generated areas. You can do all, all kinds of things like that. You can build sites, sort of, um, using the campsite builder. You can go around and collect items. You can adventure into many areas that are completely inaccessible in Fortress Mode, such as, like, human civilizations, dwarven civilizations. And I'm kind of surprised that the game isn't lagging right now. This is a packed fortress. It's a human brewer. All right, you're a brewer. Where's the alcohol? <laughs> I need a drink. Speak with this goblin. My name is Saxul. This servant of Tubal, the Golden Canyon of Cobalt, greets you. And the goblin says, Hello, dwarf. I am Nako Turmoil Dungeon. You seem friendly. Uh, let's inquire about any troubles. And they say, uh, well, let's see. We've got an army on the march. Beasts, criminals, bandits, a skulking vermin, and a bone-chilling horror. And a missing treasure. I'm going to ask about the skulking vermin and the missing treasure, but let's start off with the treasure. Uspu Cobalt Curses wants shameful quest the Oaken Crown return. Last I heard it was in Bolt's Crimson. I feel like I've been to Bolt's Crimson. Uh, we are not in... Okay, so I, I asked them if they can tell me where I can find it, and they say, I'm not exactly sure where to look. Well, that's not useful. I do not want to begin a performance. Where does Goblin run off to? Lo the Long-Eyed Dean. Great listener. Let's speak with somebody else. Uh, they say, hello, I'm Mistum, a craft star, servant of e Exa. Okay, um... Let's inquire, a, let's ask about the local ruler as they run off. Uh, the figure of duty rules Cobalt, uh, Cobalt, hmm, Cobalt entranced, uh, and it is for the best. Yep. DF does, in fact, work on the Steam Deck. In fact, depending on who you ask, uh, it runs quite well. I could ask them to join me in insurrection, or I could change the subject. I love how, like, the, the conversation system in this game goes from 0 to 11 really quick. Um, I'm also going to put out a ping on Discord that we're playing Adventure Mode now. But essentially the way I would describe Adventure Mode in, like, two sentences is if Fortress Mode is heavily, heavily inspired by RimWorld... Or, what, or if RimWorld heavily, heavily inspired, was inspired by Fortress Mode, then Adventure Mode inspired Kenshi. Adventure Mode is a, it gives you that world and lets you wander around it freely and fuck with things in different ways that you can't in Fortress Mode. You can have a party of adventurers or a solo group of adventurers, and it's less about being a crafting game currently and more about poking the world from either a monster hunter, a scholar, or a poet's perspective. Because in Fortress Mode, you get monster hunters, mercenaries, and scholars showing up, right? Um, as well as, like, poets and performers. Those are kind of the archetypes that you can be, except you can be any race that's in the world that is a part of a faction, essentially. Um, unless you just want to be not part of a faction from somewhere random. So currently, we're kind of somewhere between Monster Hunter and Bard, I would say. Uh, inquire about any troubles. Skulking Vermin. Do tell me about the Skulking Vermin. About the Skulking Vermin. Our people have been uh, pestered by Skulking Vermins. They have a camp called Tobis. Somewhere in the steppe of sculpting. 
Ask for, ask for directions to Tobis. Uh, I must take my leave. You do not have directions to Tobis? That's unfortunate. Well, I can say goodbye. I'm going to go back to trying to find booze. Glad you didn't mess the end of the stream. We've still got like two hours left. Venturing into the gargantuan messes of a generated dwarven fort. I love how I could just pick up a chair in here. This is like a furniture stockpile, I think. I need to speak to your inner demons. I mean, I know the feeling. I can try and show you guys some of the cabin building stuff. Hold on. We need to see what's over here. Oh, there's dogs everywhere getting pets. Uh oh, I need to lead Tiny. Oh, no, Tiny made it through. That's good. Kind of hard to follow the sprites. But ironically, this is. I know that some people don't like it, which is why I'm not doing it, but it would be way easier for me to play this in ASCII. So lying down again. Ooh, this might be what I'm looking for. Mudstone statue of a beetle man. Pig cheese! Excellent. Pump helmets. Thirsty dwarf seeking wine. Uh, this is a pack called... I mean, I could swap visuals packs. I just kind of want to keep it consistent. But this is this is Vettelinger's tile set. One of the more popular tile sets. I don't know where I... Oh, there's Tiny. Okay. <laughs> just trying to keep a, keep an eye on this bear and this person who's my squirrel companion who's Chats OC. Bunch more random crap. It's still it's dinner time for Elfie. Hopefully you have good dindin. It's like I really could have just like, you know, gone to a river, but I wanted to find booze. I'm literally here because I'm trying to find alcohol. These are all bedrooms, right? Yes. But yeah, I don't know how Adventure Mode is going to surprise us, and I'm trying to, like, not speculate too much. Because, honestly, I, I speculated a lot. For Fortress Mode. And almost every single one of my speculations were, was wrong <laughs> during Fortress Mode pre-release. Like, quite literally, almost every single one of my speculations was wrong. And I just kind of don't want to do that again. Because, like, I don't really see the point. <laughs> and just, like, guessing so that I can be, like, wrong. <laughs> what are you? A goblin diagnoser. Her hair is extremely long, and she has low cheekbones. A lot of goblins in this dwarven fortress. Well, the thing that you need to realize, right? In adventure mode, you have to drink and eat daily, right? In fortress mode, they drink and eat, like, every other month. Um, so because they eat and drink so much more... Yeah, you're drinking water, but you don't get any positive effects from drinking water. It just quenches your thirst. So it stops you from dying, basically. Whereas if you're drinking alcohol, you get the euphoric, which cheers your dwarf up, makes you happy, makes you cry, and also, like, 
improves other things. So you're benefited more by drinking alcohol, but it doesn't matter so much. And then if you're a human, like, water's fine. Just scanning for... Still haven't found any booze. This is a very much a not dwarven fort. I refuse to believe. No, you're not really, you're not penalized for water, no. But like, if I jump, actually, to those of you who haven't seen this before, I just need to find that button. Um, I could have looked at the keyboard, but these are your stats, right? So over on the left, those are your skills as you're learning them. Over on the right is your health, and then in the middle is your needs. So like, you'll eventually start to get upset if you don't drink alcohol, because it says drink alcohol undistracted. You'll eventually get distracted and you'll start getting debuffs if you don't drink alcohol. So dwarves do need to eat alcohol. Yeah, if if you're um, a goblin, don't go- I thought goblins need to eat and drink. They just don't care about alcohol. Or am I like vastly misremembering? I haven't played a goblin in a while. Same with elves, I think. But I seem to recall you need to eat and drink as a goblin. But I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, please tell me I am. Then we could. And uh, for tomorrow's stream, we're going to start with adventure mode and then swap to fortress mode halfway through the day. Gotta say, it's really weird streaming fortress mode and then swapping to adventure mode and like... not changing game directories because I feel like I'm playing a different game now. Keep having to walk single file underneath people and ending up lying down. Is this what I'm looking for? Chests. Bunch of pedestals. Oh boy. Could run all the way back up to the top because sometimes they have taverns up top too. What is that? This is a siltstone almul. It's a huge stationary percussion instrument. It consists of a glass bell, and the musician strikes the bell. The instrument has a single mid-low pitch, so it's a giant glass bell. It's like a bell gong. It's kind of cool. Go down a little further. I've lost track of how many layers I've gone down. Well, there's the caverns. Those are probably just bedrooms. Yeah, that's the bottom. Well, I've walked to the bottom of this fort. Same, Postman Matt. Although, part of the reason I'm doing these streams is so that people can kind of get an idea of what to expect from Adventure Mode. Because I think people are going to have one of two responses to it. Well, maybe three. They're either just going to be like that group of people that never cared about Adventure Mode and won't care. And will be happy it's out so that like they can talk about and announce new things that they haven't seen before. Then there's going to be the people who love it. And then there's going to be people who are overwhelmingly disappointed. And I want the number of people that are overwhelmingly disappointed to, like, be as small a number as possible. Like, I don't care if you like it or dislike it, that's fine. But if you get ex if you get yourself excited for it and you disappoint yourself, that's not great. We have a tavern up here. And before, there's just booze right here. I didn't even need to go in there. Ha! Ha! Yay! I am now holding 40 Dwarven rum in my white in my right hand. Don't worry about it. It's fine. I'm also probably overburdened because it's probably heavy. I'm going to drink some of that rum. And then I'm going to drink some more of that rum. And then I'm going to put that rum into my bag. Into my water skin. 
Uh, no. Okay. Now, I just put my bag into the water skin, which is not what I wanted to do, by the way. I'm going to remove the bag and put the bag into my backpack. Do I not have a backpack? Oh, I guess I don't have a backpack. All right, well, um, hmm. Guess I get to go find a new backpack. At least I'm no longer thirsty. <laughs> so that problem's sorted. Let's see, is there anything I can grab here? Does anybody have... I'm also lying down. Does anybody have a backpack? I need a backpack. I must have, like... Actually, hold on. Can I wear the bag? I'm going to wear that. Puts. Okay, hold on. Let's just get out of here. I'm just curious about how overburdened I am. Oh, I'm not actually. Okay. Uh, well, let's just see. Do I have a backpack? No, oh, you're right. I do. I do, in fact, have backpack. Well, I, I don't need need all these coins. I kind of brought them along as souver souvenirs. So let's drop the coins and drop the coins and drop the coins. And I'm going to put the dwarven rum. Okay, where where is my backpack then? Backpack is on my upper body. Could it be the charcoal, maybe? I think I, I, I might be con, I might be confused here, but I think that I have plump helmets in my boot. <laughs> um. All right. Let's let's drop. Oh no, they're in my left hand. Okay. Let's just drop this charcoal. What dwarven rum? Yeah. No. I I still can't do that. That I can put into my backpack. I guess there's just too much rum. I'm just going to drop this rum on the ground. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to drop this rum onto the ground, and then I'm going to pick up... Hmm. Set all back up. That's interesting. I like how there's only one unit of it now. Put the dwarven rum... Okay, now I can put it in my backpack. Yeah, I guess I just had too much. And let's also check my inventory because my dress and trousers are like shoddy and falling apart. Do I think plump helmet alcohol tastes good? I have no idea because I don't know what a plump helmet tastes like. I can tell you this, there's definitely types of dwarven alcohol that probably do not taste good. Yeah, that's weird. Okay, well, let's let's put this pigtail bag into my backpack. Okay, now I, I got it. Okay, I got it sorted. I have alcohol in a bag in my backpack now. So now we can figure out a quest. I'm really curious to see how they sort out the um, nightmare that is <laughs> what goes in what hand for fortress mode or adventure mode rather when they update it. That's honestly the stuff I'm most interested in seeing. Well, I can tell you this gutter crewer and sewer brew probably don't taste too good. And they do actually make a uh, mushroom wine in real life. So you could probably go find some mushroom wine in real life and try it. But yeah, turns out I did have a backpack and it wasn't full, but I couldn't put it into my backpack for some reason. Maybe it's because there was other things in my backpack. Anyway, this goblin crosswoman says, hello, I'm Bax. Hello, Bax. 
Uh, let's inquire about any troubles. I hear that there is an insurrection against the figure of duty in Cobalt Trends. That's literally right here. Don't know anything about it. It is for the best. That <laughs> is sad but terrible. State that it is terrific. Well, I mean, we're literally there right now. Uh, well, it was inevitable. Uh, change the topic. Do they have any other troubles? There we go. We've got armies on the march, beasts, criminals, bandits, skulking vermin, and a bone-chilling horror and a missing treasure. Let's ask about the skulking vermin. And they say, our people have been pestered by skulking vermins. They have a camp called Stolophophyticus, somewhere in the hills of controlling. All right. Do you have directions to that place? And they say, it is far to the east. And we receive a detailed description. In the mid-spring of 250, the kobold Dogo Bofro Bus, uh, Raptor Will, suffocated, slain by a kobold Falulder Coolnesses in Stolophilocatus. This guy knows all about these kobolds. Kalman's notched hatchet. That is pretty far, if that's the one he's talking about. Like, that's all the way across the map. What's up, budgie? How's things, man? Yeah, that's a bit far. I ain't going that far. Uh, inquire about any troubles. What else do you have? Any other skulking vermin? They have a place called... Okay. Uh, our people have been pestered by skulking vermins. They have a tomb called Fight Grape. Somewhere in the step of trails. Do you have directions to Fight Grape? Fight Grape is a day travels to the east. There we go. Uh, in the early winter of 196, the poem of bowing defeated the union of whiskers and pillaged fight grape well we could go to a tomb you guys want to go to a tomb chat hello bob tron good morning or good evening chat said good morning so my brain said morning but it's after like evening here i think we should go on an adventure to 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 fight grape sites uh where is Fight grape. Fight grape. It's a tomb. That's doable. We can go there, I think. To the tomb! Known as Fight Grape. With uh, plenty of food and other things in hand. Can I just say it's really funny when Cobalt names actually when Cobalt names actually are names? Franken's presence in Fight Grape. Franken. What's up, G-Werp? How was your stream today? We're gonna go find Franken in Fight Grape. And horribly murder some kobolds, probably. As we slowly move over the overworld. Getting hungry and thirsty. We're going to need to stop. It's also getting dark. Nope, now it's nighttime. Let's drop down. We're drowsy, hungry, and thirsty. There was snow there for a second, and then it all melted. I love how I managed to have Dwarven Rum and 40 units of Dwar Dwarven Rum. I drink the dwarven rum. I eat the chopped cockatiel leather. Leather? Liver. Um, my be goose, thank you very much for the sixth month. Welcome back. Hope that you're doing well. 
And uh, it's late, so I'm going to make a campfire. I'm going to sleep until dawn. I'm also pretty close to some scary things, so if we get attacked, I wouldn't be too surprised. As I say that... We're getting attacked by some dingoes. So I'm going to stand up. And I'm stunned because we only just woke up. I'm going to eat some grizzly bear meat. I'm going to drink some ale. I'm going to draw my spear and buckler. And I'm going to shout to everybody. Actually, no. I'm going to shout to my deity. And I say, my name is Saxul Galley Chores. And uh, for my deity... I'm going to brag about my violent acts. I have taken down one cougar while stalking the jungle of fording. I'm trying to be intimidating. And then from there, I'm going to uh, make a flattering remark at my god. And I say, you are amazing. And uh, I'm going to... I don't know. Um comment on the weather. It is a dark and stormy night. It is raining. Close enough. And uh, then I'm going to start a new conversation. And by that, I mean I'm actually going to end the com I'm going to end the conversation. And then I'm going to move up. I was... Okay. I, I, okay, there's Tiny. Uh, I wanted to catch up with Tiny. I'm going to hit this button. I'm going to go to natural ability and I'm going to give Tiny some pets. I pet Tiny. Once again, Tiny is our pet war grizzly. And uh, then I'm going to shout out to everybody. We're going to bypass greeting and I'm going to brag loudly about my violent acts, about how we took down the jungle of fording. And uh, we are, I, I say goodbye. And now we're going to attack these dingoes, which I could have run away from, but where's the fun in that? Uh, the thin dingo misses you. The thin dingo misses you. The thin the dingo strikes at you, but the shot is blocked with an iron buckler. So they're all attacking me with no quarter. Two of them, or rather, two of them are uh, attacking from the southeast. So this is why the game runs slowly during combat sometimes. Because every single tick, ten of the... Oh, also, I'm, I'm lying down. I should, oh, I can't, I can't stand up. Somebody's in the way. Let me just back up and then stand up. There we go. I'm now standing. Um... So I'm going to attack this small dingo. So these are all the options I have. I can block, dodge, wrestle, or strike. We're going to strike it in the upper body with my spear. You stab the small dingo in the upper body with your iron spear, tearing the muscle and tearing apart the right lung. Tiny appears to be joining in with the fight, and uh, our flying squirrel friend is also joining in with the fight. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit, make it a little bit to see. Uh -huh. Okay, so one of them is attacking with bite. The other one's recovering, so the safest way to be to block the one who's attacking with bite. The dingo uh, misses you, and the thin dingo strikes at you, but the shot is blocked. One of them is recovering balance. We're going to go for the dingo who's recovering balance. I could get... Let's just hit it in the lower body. Oh, I see. I don't currently actually have my my spear. So instead, I'm just going to bump attack to try and regain my spear. Um, you scratch the dingo in the head, tearing the muscle. The dingo has been knocked unconscious. The force pulls the neck, uh, tearing apart the muscle. And uh, Searl says, I have a part in this. This might require an answer as the dingo falls over. You maintain possession of the iron spear. There we go. We've now gained back my... I now have my spear again. And I strike the dingo in the head with my iron buck buckler and the injured part explodes into gore. I'm going to attack the one that's regaining balance. I'm going to strike it in the lower body with my spear. In, we strike the dingo in uh, the lower body uh, with your iron spear, tearing the muscle and tearing apart the kidney. 
But yeah, the, the combat is one of those... It's one of the things I think that people remember about Adventure Mode the most. And it's always a thing people talk about in my chat when talking when they talked about missing Adventure Mode is they just miss the combat. Because as was pointed out many a time during recent streams, Adventure Mode combat is kind of like VATS. It's kind of just it's kind of just vats, which is neat. I'm gonna hit it in the left front leg, and I'm gonna hit it with my buckler. Strike it in the front leg, bruising it. Really, we could have done better than that. Let's just bump attack a couple times. I I regain my spear because when my spear is stabbed into things, I can't use it. Thanks, Fraga, for watching. You know, at this point, you know it's getting later in the day, so anything to just kind of keep chat moving is appreciated on my end as well. Uh, you stab the dingo in the rear paw with your iron spear, tearing apart the muscle. An artery has been opened by the attack. You stab the dingo in the left front uh, leg with your iron spear, fracturing the bone. A motor nerve has been severed and a tendon has been torn. Dingo bites Searle in the upper uh, arm from the side. Ooh. My squirrel friend is having a hard time. Dingo falls over and gives into pain. Let's hit the one in front of us. You stab the dingo in the head with your iron spear, and the injured part is cloven asunder. So I've got some open space here. I'm just going to jump over here. And then I have this dingo right here. Um, who's pretty injured, specifically in the paw. So let's see what I can do. Let's strike it. Lower body's easy. You want to get an adventurer to influence all of your dwarf's opinions through arguments? I don't even know how you would do that. <laughs> sure, you probably can. If you're just like yelling about rumors and such. I mean, so you can lie pretty consistently. You can also impersonate other people, uh, which is kind of hard to spot in adventure mode unless you really know what you're looking for. Pull on the embedded spear and gain possession of the spear. And uh, Searle says this might fight too. This might require an answer. Killed another dingo. Dingo has been struck down. How many are we at now? I think three. Yeah, there we go. We have killed three dingoes in which are notable. The cougar wasn't notable. Yeah, and then I guess at that point it would just be up to your intimidation skills, right? I'm always impressed that people think that I haven't heard of it. Yes, I've heard of it. I, I had somebody, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago in my chat talk nonstop about it for like an hour. Um, yeah, I've, I've looked into it. There's a whole page on the wiki about it too. Because like the actual wrestling options are varied enough that yeah you can actually go about it like ah, that's fine uh you, you can actually like what's the word um i guess the simple the, the simple answer Nivek, is like I, I i just i've played this game too much for too long and i've streamed it for too long so it's weird it would be weird if i hadn't heard of something for me to not have heard of something it would have to be very weird and fringe that one person did once and even then someone's probably asked me about it before Especially when it comes to, like, the lore stories and stuff like that. Okay, we dodge out of the way by jumping. Flying walnut wood arrows strikes the muscular dingo in the lower body. Pairing the muscle and bruising the guts. Thanks to our friend. I am underneath a dingo. I block a shot of it. I'm going to just strike it in the lower body with a spear. Which is spilling the guts. I step up from underneath it, stand up. Uh, I don't, I guess, I, I could rest. I don't really want to wrestle it when there's so many other things around because I that put, makes me vulnerable. I'm going to hit it in the neck. With my buckler. You strike the muscular dingo in the neck with your iron buck buckler, and the injured part is smashed into the body into an unrecognizable mass. I think that dingo's dead. So I'm going to move and just hit it one more time, I guess. Uh, in the left front paw, and it sails off in an arc. How is it not dead? 
You have no neck. Wow, it's it's not dead, even though its neck is an unrecognizable mass. There you go. It finally bled to death. Okay, we're going to hit another one. Uh, recovering from attacking me with bite, we're going to hit hit. Hit it. Um, how about the other one? Stab the small dingo in the right front paw. Oh, it sails off an arc. That's the last one. Um, really isn't. Let's just bump attack a couple times. Uh, Tiny isn't a war train bear, I don't think. If I recall correctly, Tiny is a bear. Tiny is a mount slash pack animal. Bash the dingo in the left rear paw, and that part is crushed. Whoa. Well, I stabbed the dingo in the teeth, and there's now teeth everywhere. Maybe. I don't know how to. <laughs> I don't think I have any skills in animal training, so I don't know how, how I would... I think I would... I think I would need to convince somebody to join us who's an animal trainer in order to do that. Another dingo's bled to death. I'm hitting this last one. It hasn't ran yet. It's dead. I'm going to set up to a sprint. Chase this dingo. Moved out of range. I bite the dingo. Okay, this one I'll wrestle. Let's um go down to a jog. I'm going to grab it with my left hand. I'm going to grab its... It's right rear leg with my left hand. Now I've grabbed it. I'm going to wrestle. So I can wrestle using my front teeth or using my hand because I'm currently biting it. I'm going to shake the right front toe with the upper front teeth. Okay, so I'm shaking it around by the toe. You shake the muscular dingo around by the third right front toe, and the severed part sails off in an arc, and the third right front toe is ripped away fr from the remains in... Ripped away and remains in your... Gra what? Okay. Um, I'm going to wrestle using my hand now. I can do a takedown, which I'm going to try and do. Um... The muscular dingo bites you in the lower left arm, but the attack is deflected by my gauntlet. Well, that's good. Um, you take the muscular dingo down by the right rear leg with your right hand. Okay, what else can I do? Wrestle. Uh, I can pinch it. Okay, well, let's let's grab it with my other hand. Let's grab it by the neck. Uh, we grab the muscular ding dingo, but dingo by the neck. Uh, I'm now going to go back to wrestling, and we're going to wrestle using my right hand, which is grasping its neck. I'm going to... Wow, okay. I'm not actually good enough to do anything but pinch. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I will, I guess, strike it then. Or maybe not. What else can I do? So I can pinch the rear leg or I can pinch the throat or the neck, which is um, not not great. Um, hmm. I'm going to pull out my weapons. And just bump into it. You stab the muscular dingo in the left rear paw with your iron spear, tearing the muscle, and a nerve has been severed. You kick the muscular dingo in the upper body with your left foot, bruising the muscle and tearing apart the spine's nervous tissue. You lodge the spear in the wound, gain possession of the spear, keep stab it, stab it, stab it, stab it, and the dingo has been struck down. What a time. I'm going to uh, speak with my companion here. I'm going to greet the listener. I say, it's good to see you. It's great to have a friend like you. And I say, it's great to have a friend like you. I'm going to ask how the listener is feeling. And I say, how fe fleeting life is. Be gone fear. Now I have a toe as a trophy. I'm good. I don't want to carry around a toe. I'm going to try to calm the listener. And they say, I am... Well, <laughs> I assure you I am already calm. Look to yourself. But, but, but... 
You're the one shouting about how fleeting life is. Inquire about any troubles. <laughs> That's funny. I was wondering if they would say something about the dingoes. Change the subject. Um, I'm going to brag about my violent axe. I took down a cougar, but since then we've taken down many dingo. I'm going to tell a joke. Don't waste my time. Because I tell them about uh, the... the, 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 the I, uh, about <laughs> So the giant ocelot in the nightmare... I'm going to say goodbye and go nap while these ads finish. Try stating my values next time. But yeah, I think in order to war train Tiny, I would have to find somebody with animal training skill because I don't have any. And, like, the weird thing about adventure mode is if you have no skill in a thing, you can't gain skill in a thing. It's like it's not possible for your character. Which really makes me want guild halls to work in adventure mode. It would be really cool if you could, like, go to one of your fortresses and then just learn blacksmithing. Even if you couldn't do it. You are, Baka? Or just chat in general? I'm also just going to move my camera up ever so slightly. There we go. You are? Gotcha. And also, I uh, just wanted to say thanks to the 180 of you guys who are sticking around as well as the 35 people on YouTube. If you're saving forts for adventure mode, I would, if you're that eager, I would recommend you mess around with it a little bit. You regain consciousness. Stand up. And uh, it appears that the uh, river here has thawed, meaning most of the, <laughs> most of the uh, bodies have fallen into the river. I'm just going to jump into the river real quickly. Jump out. What are you doing? Uh, are you drowning, Zerl? I know I have, like, swimming skill. I don't think you do, but... Okay, so... We have to kind of head up north a little bit. I mean, you've, pr you've been watching this stream for a while. You could probably get into this without too much trouble. I'm going to go around that. What is that? Do I drop down at the camp, chat? See what's in the camp. Oh. You know what's fucked up, chat? I've just been chewing on a dingo toe. I kind of thought he would drop that. <laughs> I'm just running around with a dingo toe in my mouth. I'm going to drop the dingo toe. <laughs> um, and then we're going to head slightly south. Let's see what's at this camp. Uh-oh. Look at this. Kobold Wrestler? Well, it's time to um, mutilate some kobolds, I think. They're fighting with, e with each other, too. And it appears that Tiny is assisting. Yeah, so these kobolds are fighting each other. I don't know why. Sudden confusion. There's going to be dying kobolds everywhere in a second. It appears that my companion here is also chasing kobolds. They've all kind of vanished. Hmm. Well, let's head south. See what they have. There's just blood everywhere. 
I look down here. There's just a pile of cobalt blood. They're biting each other? Here, I will put them out of their misery. Recovering from attacking the kobold wrestler. So it's kobolds attacking kobolds. I'm going to strike this kobold uh, wrestler in the neck with my spear. That's one kobold down. I'm going to attack this one. I'm going to strike it in the neck with my spear. And that's two of them. When I move forward. Turns out kobold's not a huge threat. Um... This one is scampering away. I'm going to strike it in the leg, stab it with my spear. And then I move forward. You stab the 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 gaped teeth kobold wrestler in the head, shattering the skull. I think it's dead. Yes, it is. I'm actually curious. How's my dwarf doing here? Afraid after experiencing trauma, but I don't feel anything after seeing kobolds die. Well, it could be worse. Could be worse. What are those shot glasses that... What is that shot glass that... Or rather, that shot that you can drink at that one place that has a toe in it, supposedly? Any of you guys read about this? I, I swear that I've read about a shot that has a toe in it. Oh, uh, I can get this one in the upper body. I can punch it. Actually, currently I'm, I'm I'm not armed, so let's wrestle with this. I'm gonna grab it with my left hand. Grab it by the tongue, obviously. Uh, I grabbed it by the tongue from behind with my left hand. I'm not gonna wrestle it. I'm gonna perform a throw by the tongue with my left hand. Um. I throw the kobold spearman by the tongue with my left hand. And um, then I pull out my, my spear and shield. And uh, the, gape, the, 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 the gape teeth kobold spearman slams into an obstacle and uh, is unable to break the grip of your left hand on its tongue. I'm going to continue wrestling using my left hand. Um, I'm going to perform another throw. I'm going to wait a turn. I throw it. And the kobold slams into an obstacle. Once again. Um, <laughs> be, be, because of the ferocity of my tongue. Uh, this actually made it skid along the ground, uh, bruising the muscle and shattering the left true ribs through the small cave spider silk tunic. Sour toe cocktail from, from the Yukon. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard about this. Maybe that's what my dwarf was trying to do. Just walking around sucking on a toe. Um, hold on a second. Tiny scratch. Okay, well, Tiny's helping now. Tiny scratches the uh, kobold that I was throwing around from behind and kills it. So Tiny now has a kill. Good on you, Tiny. This one is just screaming in fear. And honestly, I would be doing the same thing. And I think that kobold landed on me, which made me fall over. The fun funny thing is most of these kobolds are actually, like, neutral to me. <laughs> I'm just killing kobolds. Um... Let's um, hit you with the, in the lower leg. We're going to bash you with my buckler. And strike you in the upper body with my spear. Gives into pain. Get lethal strike. Head. Stab. Still took two more hits to kill, but... Well, and there's more of them. They have a pile of loot. You know, a sort of shot with a worm in it, but that's about it. There is a particular Japanese bar that I went to once that has a, a shot with an eel in it on the menu, and I've never ordered it and will never order it. I'm good. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> has a live eel in it, and like I said, I'm good. You stab the gape teeth kobold wrestler in the lower, uh, in the lower body with your iron spear, tearing the muscle, and tearing the guts. It's 
stab it in the right arm, strike it in the right arm with my buckler, and the injured part is smashed into an unrecognizable mass. Gonna bump attack it. Moved out of range, hit it a few more times. And there goes another one. We went to Japan once, and uh, they brought a jar with a dead snake and poured us a free shot. As l okay, here's how I feel about dead things in liquor. If... Yeah, I'm aware. That's how that's how bleeding and breathing works. Although they might suffocate if you stab them in the throat. If you also hit them in the chest, you can also destroy their lungs. Um, and sure, we, we could do that, theoretically. Um, for me, when it comes to dead things in my alcohol... Or when it comes to animals in my alcohol, as long as it's not moving, I'll try it once. But if it's still moving, I, I'm i good. Kind of ruins the appetite, if you know what I'm saying. Tons of coins. Man, these kobolds made out good. I got a granite-bound codex. Put it in my backpack. I'm going to put... Actually, I'm going to put these away. I'm going to remove... Where is it? Like, did I not pick up a codex? I was going to put it... I guess not. Let's see. Pick it up with my left hand. That's what I want. Let's start putting books onto my bear. Let's read this book, if I can. Uh, it's a 174-page manual entitled Classic Dissection, authored by Siga of Volt Speech. It concerns the dissection of creatures. The writing is has a very serious tone, and overall the prose is not awful, but not very good either. And I'm going to put it Guess I need to put a uh probably a bag onto my Let's see, remove the sheep's will actually that must have been what I Interesting. I guess I can't. I must need a saddle or something. Damn right, you gotta speed read sometimes, okay? How else do you plan to read things? A bunch of gloves. Yeah, my, my clothing is getting kind of bad. My trousers. Coat's okay still. Interested after learning about dissection of creatures, though. Yeah. More kobolds running away. Zinc cage. Copper cage. A trap door here? Is there a way down? Nope, just a... There's just a hatch cover here. Also a bronze pike. Basking shark robe. A lot of human clothing. I don't know if you can actually do anything with that with that knowledge. If, if you can, let me know, but... You know, a lot of this is stuff I can't wear. It's all size for humans. There's a silver morning star, though. If I wanted to learn... I pick up a puzzle box. Can I interact with the puzzle box? I doubt it. I can just name it. Okay. I will drop the puzzle box. And also... Uh, I guess drop the book.
feel like we can move along. Peels face off of kobold. Poor, poor kobolds. I don't deserve whatever I was just doing to them. So our companion here has us some scarring, but nothing major. Uh, Tiny has some pain in, in the... Yeah, has a, a scar on their right rear paws, but that's it. Okay. But now we go back to trying to find that tomb, which is north. Which also has some skulking vermin in it. Very cloudy. Which is north of us now. Getting thirsty. There's a lot of... Like, all of these little stars are points of interest moving around on the world. So they could be camps. They could be characters. They could be things we want to mess with. Things that we definitely don't want to mess with. It could be armies. Kind of have to be careful. Well, as to fast traveling. Oh, I think I missed it. So it's just to the right over here. Castle. Okay, so it's just to the east of me. Rather west, I guess. There's the tomb. Let's just go up here to this river and we'll rest. And by up here to this river, I mean I'm going to go sit here. And I'm going to uh, drink some dwar or dwarven ale. Eat some chopped cockatiel liver. I'm going to uh, compose... A poem. Obviously, we should compose it for the Faded Skulls, but chat, what do you think? The Orbs of Reason? What form of poetry should we uh, compose with? The Impervious Climax? Or the Tender... Or, wait, rather, or the Flags of Slaughter, even? The Fatal Burial is also an option. There's also, there's also the Glosses of Caverting. Whatever that means. The Aquamarine of Veneration. Oh, I'm going into those tombs, yeah. Although, supposedly, uh, they're filled with skulking vermin. So, that is the quest currently. Kobolds are literally the crows of the Dwarf Fortress world. The flags of slaughter. Mm. How about the fatal burial? I think it's fitting. We compose a poem. You have composed moths and the Ceratrus burials. The work has no particular subject, but the writing is artfully indulges the author's fancy, and the poetry is passable. I'm going to um, drink some ale, eat some grizzly bear meat, and take a nap. Until dawn. And then we go into the tomb. You guys ready for some adventure chat room? This could be fun. We could maybe find something really exciting. Or nothing of note. Uh, when you're embarking, you can add other companions or pets. I added a squirrel man companion named Searle, Searle Tree Nut. Um, be, because Twitch chat got to name it. And I, uh, brought a bear with. <laughs> it was between that or, or a raccoon, but we, we brought a, we, we brought a giant, uh, giant grit, uh, what actually is tiny? Yeah, a, a giant grizzly bear who's tiny, obviously, because we can name him. I have to be a little careful with these tombs because we don't know what we're about to run into. But this is a tomb. Someone's tomb, which supposedly is inhabited with skulking vermin. Based on rumor and tell. All right, well, I guess I have to go in this way, maybe? Nope. How the heck? Kind of a few Z levels down, too. Oh, there we go. I see where I'm supposed to go, I think. There we go. 
Cyril pets tiny. And Cyril says, A creature of the night has our people cowering in fear. The creature is Servish, a uh, budwield, the woman bridegroom of shadow. This vile fiend murdered Rykots. Revealed pelt. Um... So, our squirrel friend here is screaming about this vile beast. So, is our friend here trying to tell us, really do not go into this tomb? Because this is somebody who's completely unrelated to what we're doing right now. And also, I played with my pet. How affectionate I am. Anyways, back to a night creature as our people cowering in fear. I like, I like this, like, squirrel ADD. It's just, it's just like, creatures are not people carrying fear. Uh, this vile fiend has killed five in her lust for murder. I played with my pet. How affectionate I am. Back to just yelling. <laughs> Alright, well, let's explore this tomb. And uh, that, then we'll go see if we can find that fiend. Um, there is a locked sandstorm door here. I could pick the lock or bash it down. Bash it down. Uh, which makes a bunch of noise, by the way. Uh, I'm going to eat a plump helmet. And then I'm going to say, uh, ask for our friend here about the whereabouts of this uh, creature. And they say, I don't know myself. I don't even know anybody that could tell you. I'm going to ask, uh, well, since you keep asking, um, I'm going to ask about the listener's schemes and plots. What have you been scheming? And Swirl says, I do not scheme. I think I had a conversation going with them the whole time. I'm going to ask about their master or boss. I serve no one, they say. Bullshit, you serve Tiny. Chat, what should I ask our squirrel friend before we enter this tomb that might be our tomb? One time you made a dwarf and an elephant man and turned them both into vampires and joined a militia and witnessed the militia coup have itself twice and then accidentally aggroed the dwarf. All. <laughs> it's more tense than BG3. I mean, this isn't a knock at BG3 or a boast about Dwarf Fortress adventure mode. It's way more open. It's way more open in a good way and a bad way. Because like you can just walk into any town and just murder everybody. You know? <laughs> it's it it's that level of silliness. Alright, we'll tell a joke. I say, so the gigantic squids and the chameleon, and they go, ha ha ha, you're funny. I'm going to ask. Looks like I can claim this site for myself if I wanted to. I'm going to comment on the weather. It is cold. Comment on the natural surroundings. I would prefer to be indoors. I'm not really responding at this point. Say goodbye. And let's enter this tomb. So there's a way down and a way up. Let's go up. There is a weapon trap right here. It's got a broken copper short sword in it. I wonder if I can interact with it. Can we do the thing that we always do when I when this topic comes up? 
which is drop the subject when it comes to you guys and your silly AI stuff. I just don't like the subject. It never ends well in this chat. All right, so there's a bunch of bodies up here, human skeletons. Long fin mako shark leather bag, various chests. Large armor that I can't use. Bronze buckler, that's all fancy, copper shield. High boots. Uh, all of the chat is mostly on Twitch right now. Alderum. Rami wants me to read the thing, so I'm gonna read the thing. Uh, we found a new one. Or a new chinchilla god, rather. Uh, no people shall see them with binoculars and keep boop goes enemy. Thus, we uh, hunt robots down. Brass misappropriation sounds goofy, but is what most Benin does badly. Day war stars are not the night lights. Undesirable pr prosperous uh, are itchy. Boat uh, barnacles can eat through boats, man. However, green or blue light goes straight into the universe. Uh, infidibulum, is that a word? Means something like funnel tunnel. Okay. Uh, frontmost in other news, the attitude of accumulation when uh, oxidizing pennies for scientification. That's not a word. Let's use words. Offic officiating cat weddings is the most feline thing blind can do. Obsesses hidden in deep forest uh, locations cannot comprehend the depth that they go throughout subconscious glands. Uh, pouring confetti out. Uh, in burrows, no work can... Caught up. Done. Easy peasy. Bronze buckler. I'm going to grab 25 of these arrows. Put it in my backpack. Actually, I'm just going to grab you. Now playing our squirrel friend. Uh, those are bolts. Okay, hold on. Uh, no, drop that, please. I don't need to carry a chest around. Uh, let's tab back. You drop arrows. Tab back over to the squirrel friend. Grab 25 arrows. Tab back over and let's head back down. Okay, so there's a lot of noise going on in the basement. Or over, above us, I guess. Which leads me to believe Tiny's having some fun. Muscular human Gelder strikes at you, but the shot is blocked. I didn't see him. I was looking at chat. So there is a muscular human Gelder mummy. A true terrifying Dommy mommy. All right, well, I don't like the fact that this mummy is a Gelder. I do not like that, but an ad break is about to play. So I'm going to let the ad break play, and then we're going to fight the mummy. It appears that she is purple, or he is purple, rather. Uh, his head's uh, sideburns are gone. His head's sideburns is gone. His head's mustache is gone. His head's chin whisker is gone. His head's hair is gone. Okay, so everything is gone, but he's incredibly muscular. Uh, his upper arm is broken. Uh, his left shoulder is broken. His neck is rotten. His body is rotten. And his upper body is rotten. Everything else is gone. Yeah, he's also got an arrow sticking out of him that my, my, my friend just fired. Uh, 
Ripped, waxed, and falling apart. <laughs> Ripped, wa- Hmm. It's definitely not relaxed, so I, I don't know how else to rhyme those, but... Is this the description of the toe you were chewing? No, this is Ellen Ethemacol. A, um, human mummy. Have you seen, uh, the movie The Mummy? <laughs> he is muscular, but yes. He was once muscular, if, if you will. Maybe it's like magical muscles holding him together. Yes, this is a human gelder mummy. A walking mass of mumble muscle assembled purely for the task of castration. Yes. It's okay. I don't have balls as this adventurer, so we're totally safe. We are a lady venturer, so you, we, are, we are totally fine. Do not worry. He's just going to look at us in confusion and be miffed and walked away. Also, hello, trusty Jode. So, um, chat, I got a question. Do you think we're going to win or die? <laughs> just dropped. There's layers to that joke. Is gone, indeed. We win these, you think? I mean, I didn't see it initially, but I don't think we've been hit yet. I'm not entirely sure what the capabilities of the claim command are. Chat here might be able to help, though. All right, well, it's right on top of us. So I'm going to dodge east. And stand up. I'm going to draw my weapons. I move towards it. Now I'm underneath it again. Wait, what? I, th I would have thought that would have attacked, but dodge out of the way again. Uh, we block it a bunch of times. I'm going to stand up. And see... Okay, it's out of the way already. The muscular mummy attacks you, but you jump away. The muscular human gelder mummy jumps away from the flying bronze arrow. And I'm going to attack it while it's regaining balance. I'm going to strike it. Never mind, I can't do that. It's too hard to strike. Um, I'm just going to bump attack it see what the game makes me do. You stab the muscular gelder in the right lower leg with your iron spear, fracturing the bone. Uh, it's attacking you with a bronze knife slicing knife slash. I'm going to parry it with my iron spear. It strikes at me, but the uh, shot is definitely parried by the iron spear. It's recovering from attacking me. Let's see if I can hit it. Not really, apparently. I mean, I could try and hit it in the head. Let's bash it with my spear. You bash the muscular human gelder in the lower body with the shaft of your spear, but the attack glances away. Yeah, that's kind of what I was expecting to have happen. Um, I'm going to parry it again, because I'm skilled at that. Parried it with my spear. I'm going to... Hmm. Yeah, that's that's the issue here. Let's just bump attack it because I'm not entirely sure what it wants me to do in that other menu, and I feel like I'll have a better better luck if I bump attack it. You stab the muscular gelder in the right lower leg with your iron spear, fracturing the bone. You stab the muscular human gelder mummy in the right uh in the right upper arm with the iron spear fracturing the bone and fracturing the right shoulder's bone through the large rope reed cloak. A tendon has been torn and a ligament in the right shoulder has been torn and a tendon has been torn. The upper... Uh, stab it in the shoulder through its clothing. Its clothing is ripped to shreds. The force twists the right shoulder. Searle stands up, our friend. 
uh, because they went to attack Cyril, but Cyril scrambled away. If our squirrel friend, who's on the other side of them now, because we're standing on the left where the stairs, right? And then it's in the middle here. And then our friend is right here. If our friend, like, gets hit, our friend is just dead. I'm just going to zoom in a bunch for the combat. Pull on the embedded end of the spear and gain possession of it. You know, I could get, like, some pretty barely... Okay, we're going to go for a tricky strike. I'm going to hit it in the head. Stab it in the head with my iron spear. Uh-oh, now I'm bleeding. That was a bad mistake. The human gelder... Uh, we strike at the musk of the human gelder money, but the shot is narrowly deflected. Uh, it kicks me in the right upper arm, and the injured part is smashed into the body in an unrecognizable mass. Oh, that's bad. My arm is mangled beyond recognition. Heavy bleeding. Pain. Moderate pain. Ability to grasp. Somewhat impaired. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just bump attacked. Hmm. Bleeding. On ground. Pain. Charges at you. We're, we tumble backwards. We strike at the muscular... Uh, Mummy, human mummy gelder in the nose with your iron buckler. So we took off its nose. So I guess that's good. I'm gonna dodge. Eh. Gonna dodge west. Try and stand up, which I can't. Attacks me, but I roll away. I need this bleeding to stop. Flying bronze arrow uh, strikes the gelder in the upper arm, fracturing the bone. I did get its nose. So I no longer have my spear. Um, Strikes at you, but I block it. Strikes at me, but I block it. Stabs you in the lower body with a bronze slicing knife, tearing the muscle and tearing the stomach through the one-humped camel leather coat. Hmm. I was aware this was a possibility when we came in here. Strikes at you, but the shot is blocked. Uh... Okay, well, that's also bad. Mummy strikes at you. So manage to... Okay, hold on. I need to see the full combat log there. Upper leg. Ugh. Uh, Flying bronze arrow strikes the muscular human gelder mummy in the upper body, tearing the muscle. And uh, the bronze arrow is firmly lodged in the wound. The mummy attacks you, but you scramble away. I'm kind of going for my spear now. We blocked a bunch of hits. I'm no longer bleeding, so that's good. I'm going to... I love how I can pick up my own blood. <laughs> I'm going to pick up my iron spear. I'm going to... Strap my buckler to my upper body. And take out the iron spear. So I'm now re-equipped with my iron spear. I've also lost quite a bit of blood. Um, feel like the best thing to do is try and get into this room. Strikes at you, but the shot is easily deflected with the iron spear. And I'm bleeding again. Uh, stabs you in the upper leg. Okay, now I, I, I have to stand my ground. I am deceased. But I can become somebody else. So Soxul, our friend here, uh, gets slashed in the upper body with his bronze slicing knife, tearing apart the muscle and shattering the right ribs. An artery has been opened by the attack, and a tendon in the right true ribs has been torn. The bronze slicing knife is firmly lodged in the wound. Pulls in the embedded slicing knife. I lost possession of my... Uh, <laughs> I gained possession of the slicing knife, and then I lost it. Uh, the muscular human gelder mummy slashes you in the upper body, 
with his bronze slicing knife, tearing apart the muscle and tearing apart the left lung. Continues stabbing me just repeatedly. Flying bronze arrow strikes him. And the arrow is lodged in the wound. Slashes me in the upper body with the bronze slicing knife, tearing apart the muscle and tearing apart the left lung. You have bled to death. So, I am now our squirrel friend. Um, who is also bleeding. <laughs> and also on the ground. Um, been fun, chat. Let's see if I can... <laughs> nope. I was just trying to move into that area. The muscular overlord, uh, mummy, kicks you in the right hand with his left foot, and the injured part collapses. An artery, an artery has been opened by the attack, and the force twists the right lower arm, tearing the fat and bruising the bone. Thought the combat was really frustrating. Yeah, I mean, it's still, it still can be frustrating, but that's fine. So that um, ends the adventures He draw, pulls out the arrows out of his body and straps the bronze slicing knife to his upper body. That's the last thing that we see him do. And then he pulls out and drops the bronze arrow. Pulls out and drops the bronze arrow. And that's it. Fun. So chat room, I've been streaming for ten and a half hours. The plan for tomorrow is we are going to play some adventure mode in the morning. And then in the evening, we'll swap over to fortress mode. Sort of like the opposite of what we did today. Um, if I'm not mis- I don't know too much about mummies. But if I'm not mistaken, mummies are like necromancer zombies. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong there. But I'm pretty sure mummies are necromancer zombies. Although, let's check. Let's let's look at something real quick, right? Um, because we're playing in this one, I think. Engine four. Um, E L L U M, twine quests. Who was that person? Human money, mummy. Uh, twine quests. Was the lawgiver of the vision of whiskers. Oh. Trying to see where he died. Ellen was mortally wounded by a dwarf suxel. Oh, wow, I mortally wounded him? The bitter razor of action, who bled to death with a bronze slicing knife in fight grape. The body of the dwarf suxel of actions was animated by Ellen fight grape. And Elam became the overlord of the steam of disembowelers. Elam struck down the squirrel man, Cyril Treenut, with a bronze slicing knife in fight grape. So us dying in there made this guy become the overlord of a thing. He's got two notable kills. He killed a squirrel once. Or not a squirrel, a troll once. So we just created a monster. <laughs> Which is fun. So now we could go in there and kill this guy and our previous adventurer. I suppose. Also, can I just comment on the fact that Elam, this person, was originally struck down by an elephant after trying to defend this place. Was entombed in fight grape within the branded crypts and uh, was disturbed from eternal rest by the dwarf Saxul. The Razor of Action as a mummy. So we created a monster. Next time on Dwarf Fortress Legends. <laughs> that was fun. He led the defense, though? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, true. Maybe he was put into eternal slumber. I don't know. Well, anyway, regardless, we created a monster. It's our fault. 
Chat room, I've been live for ten and a half hours. I'm tired. A lot of people have gone to bed. Things have gotten a little quiet in both places. On Twitch and YouTube. We made the world a worse place. I mean, I killed plenty of 